Welcome to this episode of the AEC Engineering and Technology Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping engineering professionals find technology that fits their needs. In this episode, I'll be speaking with John, who currently serves as the Chief Operating Officer of T2D2, an artificial intelligence asset inspection software platform that is used by engineers, architects, and building owners to make their inspection workflows faster, cheaper, and more accurate. John is an expert in the integration of drones and artificial intelligence and facade inspection. And in this episode, we'll be discussing the benefits, challenges, and future prospects of using these cutting edge technologies. So let's dive in and uncover the fascinating role drones and AI play in building facade inspection. John, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to have you on, and uh, thanks again for for taking the time to to join us today. But why don't we just get right into it here? Because we got a got a lot of interesting topics to talk about. But we can start today. Could you just tell the audience a little bit more about yourself and what you're doing on a daily basis? Sure, absolutely. Thanks, Nick, and uh, thanks for having me on the podcast. Very excited to be here. So I'm John Ehrlich. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of T2D2. Uh, T2D2 is a software company used by engineers, architects, third-party drone service providers as well uh, to analyze, store, and report on imagery that is captured in the field from site inspections. And we use our artificial intelligence to automatically detect over 50 types of damage on exterior building conditions. Well said. And and kind of in that, the, the introduction you just gave, right, you mentioned, you know, damage detection and inspection, right? So could you explain like the, the product that of yours that engineers and architects are using, right? They're using it for, for building and facade inspection, but could you explain why those are important? Sure. Yeah. I mean, listen, we see that the building and facade inspection industry continues to grow. Uh, it, it continues to grow as a result of our infrastructure and built environment aging, right? Uh, that's happening for a number of reasons. Buildings are getting older. Uh, the methodology for building new buildings is changing, and that's necessitating inspection on even new product. Uh, and of course, uh, there also are conditions that are being accelerated due to climate, where we see reinforced concrete structures uh, being corroded at a, an accelerated pace. That's something that I'm sure you're familiar with as well. So we see the inspection space as something that's incredibly important. There's a lot of attention that's paid to uh, the site inspections on construction sites and new construction. But really, we we focus on the existing building stock. Uh, our software is used for all sorts of different inspection types, but I definitely focus on facade inspection. You know, facade inspection is also super important because of where there are facades, right? If you think of, well, sure, facades are anywhere, but if we think of larger buildings, we're thinking about urban areas, uh, areas that have um, a mobile pedestrian public, right? People driving and walking around. Uh, so a significant portion of facade inspection is safety. Uh, there are over 15 cities in the United States alone, and there's some internationally as well, that actually mandate facade inspection on a periodic basis. Uh, that was something that was started in New York in 1980. A lot of people uh, can't believe that it's already been that long that New York has had a facade inspection requirement, uh, but it's certainly not alone. And unfortunately, as we see catastrophes continue to occur on a regular basis. We see more and more interest from regulators uh, and a lot of interest in terms of not only how do we keep the public safe, how do we keep buildings safe and secure, uh, but also how do we do it while embracing technology? So that's why I think that facade inspection is an incredibly interesting and important topic. And, you know, well said, and I was going to ask you, you know, as a, as a resident of, of New York City yourself, right, you're, you're constantly seeing these laws, laws evolving, right? And, and, you know, whether it be a facade, which is one local law, or parking garages, which is another, right? Government entities are paying attention to what's going on with existing building stock and, and built environment assets in their jurisdictions. And, and that, like, as you said, right, are really just trying to keep the public safe. That's it. Um, you know, just like you said, exactly. There are multiple laws here in New York City that require periodic facade inspection. Uh, I will be the first to disclaim that I am not an engineer, but I definitely spend a lot of time uh, around these laws. So I'm familiar with 
the facade law in New York City. And you are right that there also recently was enacted a parking garage law that is similar, but not as uh, not as complex yet in in um, its implementation. The facade inspection law in New York was traditionally referred to for a long time as Local Law 11. So a lot of people know it by that name. Now it's called the Facade Inspection Safety Program or FISP. Um, and it is a requirement that every building above six stories uh, inspect or have their facade inspected by a qualified inspector every five years. And we see a lot, just like I said, of new laws, similar laws popping up around the country. And you made a great point as well as, you know, there's this combination between, right, the licensed professional and the technology, because, you know, as a licensed professional myself, right, it truly is a team effort to get, you know, conditions identified and ultimately repairs implemented for the safety of the public. So it's exciting to talk about some of these, these emerging technologies. And why don't we just kick off right with one that a lot of people know about drones, what are some of the advantages of using drones over traditional methods or in combination with traditional methods um, during facade inspections? Sure. Uh, I think that drones have really begun to revolutionize the way that people are looking at facade inspections and not just engineers, right? It has revolutionized the way that owners are looking at it, regulators are looking at it, and it is a new technology. There are a lot of questions around it as well. But I think that there is a pretty universal understanding that it will bring tremendous value to, to what is going on here. Uh, and there always has been and will be this tension, right? For any kind of uh, inspection-related business, there's, there's always this tension of wanting the regulators wanting it to be more and more and more inspection and the the ownership uh, interest who's paying for that inspection to want to sure keep their uh, their own interests and their surrounding interests safe but at the same time understand that they have an investment to protect and uh, can't spend the world on inspecting their building so technology really is the the answer here right with drones you actually can, uh, and I, I will say that I also can speak as an FAA licensed drone pilot as well. Uh, so you actually can get a better inspection, a more complete inspection of your entire building now in a shorter amount of time with more uh, detail that you can then analyze uh, at a fraction of the cost. So what was previously done using rope access or using uh, swing stage scaffolding, all different types of scaffolding methodologies, uh, of course, building maintenance units for, for taller structures that may have installed BMUs can now be done using drones. And a lot of the times, as you as an inspection professional know, inspections were done on a sample basis, right? You would do drops every so, so many feet, right? Uh, and now with drones, you can capture 100%. It wasn't really possible before. It was cost prohibitive to do something like that. You probably would do it on the most egregious cases, but now you can have it in every case. It opens up some other challenges professionally, technically, uh, in terms of analysis. That's where we have a lot of software that comes into play um, on the back end for, for then analyzing it. But I think that drones are a tremendous benefit. There are all sorts of um, increases in technology around the drone industry that we can get to um, that, that are really only furthering the value that drones and similar types of drone technology are bringing to facade inspection. Great point, John. And to the audience, I want you to really like think about what John's saying here, because in no way, shape, or form is the licensed professional being replaced in this instance. It's just supplementation um, for your already limited resources to essentially right get your client better end results and continue to ensure the safety of the public. So John, and maybe you can speak to this a little bit more, right? Like let's say, you know, you have a drone inspection and you're able to cover that 100%. I've I've heard and experienced, right? You know, maybe that rope access or scaffolding can be better targeted now that you have some reconnaissance done by a drone and in fact by combining the two, you can you can get a better end product, right? Because we know that drones today cannot physically physically inspect the building in the same way an inspector can, right? But I'd love to hear your take where the combination of the two comes together to make a better end product. 
Yes, the combination of the two is definitely the powerhouse answer. Um, and we see a lot of engineering professionals taking advantage of the technology in combination with whatever they're doing today. A hundred percent agree. In some cases, we see engineering services firms adopting drone skills and technologies in-house where they're beginning to actually uh, consult with some folks on acquiring drones and getting their their personnel uh, trained on how to how to use them. And in other cases, we see people using third party companies to conduct those types of operations for them. Um, and the drone doesn't have. To, so, so I just mentioned that it's great that we can get that 100 percent coverage. Right. I will say, though, that when we talk about combined operations where we're using drones or engineers are using drones uh, in conjunction with existing methodologies, it doesn't have to be that 100% coverage, right? You can do it and you know that there's a specific area that you want some advanced survey of or you want eyes on before you conduct a more thorough inspection. And you can do that more targeted inspection via drone, right? And we do see a lot of examples where people are doing that. Um, it, it's it's very helpful. And I we, we see drones being used in various parts of the workflow process, right? We see drones, just like you were saying, being used before you go out on in, into the field and conduct an inspection because it gives you a better understanding of where you should be looking, where you should be focusing and targeting. Sometimes we see it after the fact where a job has just been completed and you want to get an understanding of the post-completion um, the post-completion state of, of uh, the structure. Um, I'll also mention that when we when we see the um, the drones being used on the pre-survey, we, we see a lot of engineers that are using that because exactly like you said, we get a lot of questions of, well, can a drone drone's not a sounding hammer, right? I need to touch it. I need to have hands on. And a lot of the a lot of the times that is true. And we recognize that you do need that physical touch sometimes, uh, but visual certainly gets you a good way of the way there. Absolutely. And and again, it, it's just that combination of right using the skill, experience, and knowledge of the design professional coupled with technology, like John is saying here, to to again make that better end product. But John, as you kind of mentioned, right, like like the drone as of today, right, because we know technology is always changing, cannot let's say sound a concrete facade, right? For, for defects. What are some other limitations or challenges associated with, with drone technology in your experience? Sure. So we're solving one challenge by using drone technology, but by doing so, we have a few others that we have to, that we open up that we have to then solve, right? We're solving the issue of we can't get to somewhere without spending a lot of time and money in some cases to actually go out and, and survey something. So we're, we're using drones, right? There are a whole bunch of things that we've just discussed. Why exactly we are using drones uh, to answer those questions? What questions then pop up now? Well, maybe if we've done that 100% survey, you might end up with a few thousand photos or 100 photos as opposed to the few that you would have taken if you did it in person, right? So limitation is, all right, now that I have all these photos I need to go through, how am I going to do it? So oftentimes we have to pair that with some software, right? There are other ways that this creates a little bit of a difference in your workflow that you need to uh, adopt in order order to or, or adapt rather in order to accommodate those changes and that's part of adopting any kind of technology right um is that adaptation in in the workflow the other challenges technically speaking um there there's some regulatory cases in in some uh, urban areas where you have to understand your local airspace um there are some safety concerns that you always have to be considerate of um not all structures have the geometry that are always accessible by drones, right? You have to have a margin of safety. And one thing that we're very conscious of is this idea of facade inspection with drones is just one uh, one subset of a whole area, which is um, commercial inspection using drones, right? One area that there, there are many others as well. So we're thinking about uh, things like pipeline inspection, uh, cell tower, power ta uh, or electrical tower, um, 
offshore oil and gas, wind farms, solar farms. There are all sorts of different ways these days that drones are being used for commercial inspection. Facades is just one of those. Uh, and each one of the ones that I've just listed has their own type of technical challenges. Uh, and a lot of the other ones, if you think about um, where you might have a cell tower, right? Or, or where you may have a wind farm, you have a lot of room around you to move, right? Uh, and in many cases, you can zoom from far, far distances. But when I'm talking about doing a building facade, you don't always have all that room to move in. You have to you have to stay very close to the building exterior. You can't always move that far back because there's another, another building across the street. There are certain airspace uh, considerations as well in certain downtown areas. You could be close to airports, right? These are not necessarily things that are the biggest concern when we're talking about an oil and gas inspection uh, that's out in open water. Right. So there there are definitely these considerations from a technical perspective. It's one of the more challenging types of drone operations. We've gone so far as to actually create some standards and we're working with some bodies like ASTM on developing more standards coming down the pipeline. So stay tuned for that. Um, and some of those challenges are actually the reason why we see some service provider companies going out, um, engineering service providers going out and securing third party services that specialize in drone inspection for some of those more technically complex and in some cases, much taller structures as well. Great points. And, and, and when it comes down to it, in the case of facade inspection, like you mentioned, it really is its own unique animal um, compared to other types of, of assets and inspection protocols just because of what it really comes down to, right, is, is just, like you said, tight spaces, public safety, and a lot of just uh, adjacent players, if you will, um, that make it find your operations. But you did bring up a great point in one of kind of the, the restrictions is you now create this large amount of data, right, much larger than one person would typically gather with, let's just say, a digital camera or a phone um, and other means of access, right? And into the picture comes artificial intelligence, right? A hot topic in every, pretty much every public sphere um, since the advent of, you know, language models like chat GPT became mainstream. So from your perspective and kind of the unique circumstances of facade inspection, and let's just say, you know, the building industry in general, what are some of the pros and cons of using AI for facade inspection and analysis? Yeah, so we talked about solving challenges, but creating some more, right? So this is just further down that road of solving challenges and creating some more. So we solved the challenge of wanting to do in inspections better, faster. We use drones. Now we've created this other challenge of all of these photos. How do we, uh, how do we, handle the analysis of all of them. Solution is to use computer technology, in particular AI. The type of AI that we're talking about is uh, analyzing photos, video, other types of visual imagery in order to then detect certain types of conditions or what we might call objects. Uh, and that technology within AI that we're using is called computer vision, right? Computer vision is an incredibly powerful tool. It's similar to technology that's used in self-driving cars to detect things like pedestrians, crosswalks, stop signs, et cetera, right? It's being used in the medical industry to detect cancer, tumors, uh, to do uh, radiology analysis on various types of medical imaging. Uh, and very similar here, we are using it and other companies as well on uh, detecting conditions in buildings. Um, it is very powerful and it definitely is the solution on how do I then condense my workflow into something that uh, can be much faster and where I can begin to identify these conditions, right? There are certain things that AI is better at finding than others. There are certain considerations, just like any technology that you have to take into account. Um, but just like we see with some of the other technologies in AI that people have been talking about lately, you mentioned ChatGPT, a lot of it is about understanding how it works in order to benefit you, right? So in ChatGPT, we're talking about prompt engineering and uh, how to feed the how to feed the input so that your output is optimal. In this case, it's very similar. Not just how we are going to feed it are either drone photos or site inspection photography, uh, but also how are we then going to take the results and either 
uh, use different types of visualization tools or data manipulation tools um, in order to get you know our answer that we're looking for out here. Because at the end of the day, the workflow is not going to change, right? That property condition assessment, that report that you need to deliver to your client has to stay the same. Uh, it might change a little bit in the future. You know, you may be able to give them some access to an interactive software that they can see some of their conditions uh, in the cloud alongside of the deliverable. But ultimately, that still has to that still has to stay. So the question is, how can we use technology like AI to help engineering professionals like yourself um, compile that report? in a much faster timeline, and then move on to other components of the process as well, like CD, uh, you know, construction documentation um, and uh, and BIM generation down the line as well. Well said, and you, you kind of, you kind of alluded right to you, you solve one problem and then others get introduced as a means, but Maybe they're not prop. Let's not let's not say problems necessary, but just issues and tasks that we need to we need to work through. Because at the end of the day, you're just trying to provide, you're trying to set or exceed the level of quality that we're already at. Do it in a less expensive manner, and ultimately provide and enter a better end result for your clients and ultimately the public. Challenges but and solutions. That's that's it, right? Challenges. Well, well said, John. Now, after right, you take you ingest this large amount of data, right, and you're letting the you know artificial intelligence in the form of a software package come through and analyze the data. How is I guess value or essentially tangible next steps or actions taken from the analysis of that data? It's super important, and this is really where the rubber meets the road. You know. There, there are cases where um, people will use tools to analyze imagery with AI and you'll get a result back that says, you know, you've uploaded 300 photos, you have 5,000 problems, right? Uh, and again, it's all about understanding what that output is and manipulating it into a form that's useful. Because if you tell me that I've uploaded 300 facade inspection photos taken by a drone, for example, and the output tells me that I have 10,000 cracks, 5,000 cracks, whatever it is, this is an order of magnitude that we're, that engineering professionals are not used to, right? What do I do with all this? Where are they? What's causing them? And what we want to avoid is ending up with a workflow that takes the same amount of time or more time than it would have if you just did it the you know the old fashioned way right uh and i understand that some people might even say well you know you have to be an early adopter and you have to be willing to roll with the punches in order to then make it work for you and then ultimately when you get going it it makes you faster but we're not willing to really accept that right it has to it has to be valuable from day 1 um Otherwise, people really won't buy into it. Clients won't know what to do with it, right? At the end users. So it has to fit into that workflow. And a lot of that is about understanding how to manipulate it, right? So what do I mean by that? It's about taking advantage of visualization tools. Uh, in, in a lot of cases, we talk about tools like photogrammetry, which is the technology of taking all of the photographs that have been captured by a drone and using it to create a 3D model, and I don't mean BIM model, right? I mean the 3D model uh, from that, where you can develop uh, deliverable like a point cloud or or a, um, a, a shape file in order to then understand the three-dimensional architecture of what you're looking at. You can identify the conditions there. Uh, and when we take a two-dimensional picture of that, we call that uh, an ortho mosaic, right? Where now we're looking at an ortho rectified mosaic of all the pictures stitched together based on their edge boundaries. These are tools that we can use in conjunction with AI so that instead of looking at 300 photos with 5,000 problems, we can, for example, look at one whole photo of the entire elevation or say if, if we're looking at a four-sided uh, building, we could look at four photos instead of a few hundred or thousand. And now all of a sudden it gets a lot easier, right? So understanding what the different types of capture in terms of drone technologies are out there, the 
uh, image processing in terms of things like photogrammetry, and then AI analysis together can really create a toolkit that engineers then can use to make their process much faster. And as we've been discussing, also much more additive in terms of the, the value, the, the, um, the detail that can be provided. You know, one of the things in terms of detail that we think is incredibly helpful is when you're able to do this kind of thing, you rarely end up having to go back to a site to, to do post analysis, right? Um, how many times have people gone out, captured some things with a phone or even a drone and then said, wait, hold, hold on, I have to go back because I missed this, that or the other thing. And maybe I didn't get the right angle uh, or zoom in enough. Um, in this case, it really helps there. Uh, and AI is a tool that is part of that complete suite that's needed uh, in order to get that value. And you you brought up, you know, like, you know ortho mosaics, ortho photos, right? That are an excellent tool, speaking from experience, to provide larger context to, let's say, you know, these, these individual defects that inspection professionals are focused on, right? Still very important. But then when you're able to look at the entire asset or the entire facade in context, it may reveal more trends or, or otherwise allow you to make better decisions. And again, get to that end product um, in a way that you would, would not have without being aided by technology. Orthophotos also solve one of the one of the simplest problems that we see all the time, which is which window is this? Yes. Uh, we see so many cases where uh, people can't figure out which window they're looking at because there are just so many repeated features on a on a structure, and ortho mosaics help uh, help that a lot. And there are some other technologies as well that you can use, like GPS geotagging onto drawings, where you can answer some of those questions in similar ways. And I understand that you guys, you know, are are, are working on or have live, um, you know, functionality where you're actually able to create plans traditional 2D plans from imagery, which again is, is just another solution. If you can physically say, this is the, where the photo is taken, right? As simple as it sounds, it alleviates a lot of pain down the line. Yeah, I mean, scan to BIM, scan to drawing uh, is something that we do at T2D2 and is very helpful in cases where you don't have drawings and you need them. Um, and that can, you know, that's also another tool down the, down the pipeline that's possible with technology. And, and John, where, um, I guess, you know, the next natural question is like for these facade inspection professionals, right? How are they able to differentiate between what AI can tell them and then what AI cannot tell them? Because as we've talked, right, there's, there's always this balance, right? Technology has, has some limits, right? And you have to recognize what those are. Yes, there definitely are limits today with AI. And in order to use it as a tool, you have to understand what the limitations are and you have to accept them right now, right? You have to sort of work around it uh, until the technology advances. That's true with any technology. Uh, and we believe that there are enough early adopters within the AEC professions uh, where we will get there, right? Um, one of the major... Uh, one of the major challenges around computer vision is that we're talking about the identification of localized conditions, right? So we're looking at uh, conditions like cracks, spalls, discoloration, efflorescence, organic growth, moisture. So all of these things are, uh, are very specific to what we're looking at in a particular area, right? We're not looking at contextual clues that take the entire structure into account, like settling or uh, any condition that would not be visible. Or, and one of the things that I think engineers find uh, enlightening about that, that component of AI is it very much indicates the continued need for the engineering profession, right? Um, where that, in, that component of contextual analysis interpretation uh, of what is being shown is something that a human still needs to determine. We can look at all of these individualized uh, areas and the conditions at that location, the, the visual condition at that location. And there are also other technologies where we can find maybe um, things like infrared um, anomalies at a certain location or other types of uh, of sensor data that we pull in where we're finding 
conditions. We're beginning to look at things like acoustic sensors and, and uh, using GPR data as well. Still, anything that we're looking at, whether it's sensor data, visual, infrared, is taking place at that location at that time, right? The interpretation and, and analysis of that is something that today still has to be done by an engineer. And I think for a very long time, uh, will continue to have to be done by an engineer. And as we said earlier, right, it's it's not the replacement of the design professional. It's the creation of new opportunities because technology can do a lot of the lifting with, admittedly, right, some of these tasks that are, are repetitive or mundane and give you as the engineer, architect, or other licensed professional the opportunity to do, let's say, more with your skill set. More with your skill set. Focus on the more, listen, I've seen engineers all the time tell me that they are that they have either their junior staff or part of their staff that's looking at pictures all day long and marking up drawings based on what the pictures show, right? Either the junior engineer or somebody else is going into the field and taking these photos, sending them back to the office, and somebody is going there, marking up, uh, putting arrows on the drawing or uh, on the photos, then marking the tagging the photos onto the drawings, doing the hatching. Uh, eventually making that into a construction drawing. All of this monotonous task work can be done automatically. Uh, and then you can focus on the important part of this, which is the the brain work, the interpretation, the actual report generation, um, and interfacing with, well, with the clients. Uh, just don't tell the clients that you're using the technology. They'll ask you to charge them half the price. <laughs> Well said. And right, as we know, and we know that technology and, and these methods of data collection are changing constantly. Like what, what advancements or developments do you see in the future, particularly the integration of drone inspection um, and facades? So there, there's, there are so many exciting developments in technology on the drone side and on the AI side, right? On the drone side, uh, we see all sorts of developments around autonomy. Uh, so there are a lot of examples where drones are being used to autonomously inspect certain facilities. That's already happening in areas like utilities where drones are autonomously inspecting power lines uh, and high voltage uh, power transmission towers. So that's happening on the on cellular uh, telecom side of the house as well. We see a lot of autonomy. We think it's only a matter of time before we're able to deploy that type of autonomous technology on the building facade component of things. Um, some of the autonomous technology can be fooled by uh, the smallest challenges. We talked about challenges and solutions. Uh, believe it or not, one of those is glass. Sometimes it's hard for a drone to know where it is on its own when it's looking at its own reflection. Uh, this is a challenge, and that's why a lot of drones continue in this area. We talked about it being uh, a um, challenging space to operate in, but it's still one that is a great value, and it's why we see a lot of human operators still. <laughs> um, we see a lot of technology on board the drones when it comes to AI, where we can do things or the, the drones can do things like sense proximity from structures, right? So if I want to do a facade inspection of a, of a building and stay at 20 feet or 30 feet distance, I can set the drone at the distance from the building. Historically, the only way that you were able to do something like that was set a GPS path. And GPS in dense urban areas is notoriously unreliable. So being able to uh, do your localization based on something that's actually present, as opposed to rely on a some kind of wireless signal is very important and is very exciting. Um, there are also some exciting things happening around uh, autonomous inspection of different structures where you can set a three-dimensional bounding box and say, go inspect this whole bridge. So that's something that we see coming uh, as well. Mentioned some other things around different kinds of sensors like drone-mounted infrared, uh, and that's something that continues to develop. And then on the AI space, right? Every day there's a new advancement in AI. We're developing our own uh, advancements in AI when we are constantly deploying the ability to detect new different types of, um, of conditions, new materials or conditions and new types of materials. So we're excited about all this. We're also investigating the use of 
various large language models for uh, for some contextual examples of what we might find. So stay tuned for some exciting announcements in, in that area as well. But it's fast moving and we're excited about it. And it's just more opportunity, right, to just get to that that stated end goal that we've we've talked about multiple times here, right? Just making the inspection process better all around for all parties involved. But John, you know, it's it's been a pleasure getting to to speak with you. Um, thank you again for sharing your insights. But if the audience wants to get more involved with AI based drone inspections of facades, right? Like, what would you tell them to do next? Like, how do they get along the path to finally being able to implement all the the technology and solutions that we've talked about today? Sure. I mean, I think that uh, understanding what exactly your use case is, what your workflow is, and where there can be value to to it uh, is is very important, right? So a little bit of self-reflection, I'd say, is step one. Um, And then there are so many ways that you can begin your journey on the drone side um, and on the uh, on, on the AI side. You know, we can you can find us at t2d2.ai um, on the drone side. There's some great associations and trade groups out there that uh, cover drones. There's the uh, Association for Uncrewed Vehicle Systems (AUVSI). Um, there's some other nonprofit uh, groups surrounding drones. There's some great uh, dealers out there that sell drone manufacture that sell drone equipment that are always happy to assist firms with better understanding what the training uh, regime would be. Uh, AUVSI has in-person training as well uh, under their top program, TOP. Um, and of course, uh, if people are unaware, the, the real first step in understanding the area of drones is to pursue the FAA Part 107 uh, certified um, drone pilot certificate, which is a classroom-based test and allows you to operate drones commercially in the United States. Excellent. And John, if our listeners want to just talk to you personally about any of these topics that we've covered today, like what's the best way to reach you? Sure, you're uh, you're welcome to to reach me uh, via email, John J O N at t2d2.ai. We're on the web at t2d2.ai, and uh, you can find us on social media, LinkedIn, Twitter at t2d2. Uh, I think one of ours might be underscore AI, but I'm sure you'll find it. Um, and we're happy to walk you through AI, talk to you about the different talk to you about the different options that are out there. Uh, and if we're the right solution, happy to point you in that direction as well. Excellent. Well, John, thank you so much again for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Nick. All right. We will catch you next time. Until then, thank you. Please remember, you can find the show notes for this episode at aectechpodcast.com. There, you will find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during this episode. Until next time, I wish you the best in all of your engineering and technology endeavors. Thank you.